this was mind-boggling that in the, the collection the, of the Mutter, there are drawers that have open safety pins to indicate that they were swallowed while open. And then there's another, at least one drawer of closed safety pins so that even within this category of swallowed objects, there would be the open and closed version, you know, like. So in a way, it's about the, the, how crazy the world is, you know? And what's beautiful about this collection, um, it is a personal collection, it was put together by a doctor and given to the institution, but um, the fact that each one of these objects is united by a trauma, you know, by this sort of narrative again of, of having been trapped in the throat of the patient and then extracted by this particular doctor. So every one of these objects is, and when you think about that, that defining characteristic, it's so particular, you know, like it's, it's mind blowing in a way. And then it's so beautifully presented with all the, there's a collection of swallowed meat that he had to, he shellacked the meat so that it wouldn't rot. You have to go back next time. <laughs> so this is, these are toys, another a drawer full of toys that's swallowed by like a skate key. Um, a little tiny baby, you know, a plastic baby. Um, a, 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 what's it called? A, 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 what's it? a not a dice, but a jack, right? Um, and this is a kind of a quasi artistic collection of a woman who cut her hair every time she had an either emotional peak of you know a great moment of happiness or sadness. She decided she would register that, you know, sort of psychic reality by just sampling her hair and putting it in an envelope. And this was presented anonymously. She didn't want her name, you know, out there. So, but, and it was just, what, what's nice is that the, the hair is inside uh, a piece of paper that just gives the date and maybe some information about the, that particular moment. So it's a kind of narrative again, but that's very private, personal, that she, she let me show. Here's, I mentioned this. This is a collection of heart-shaped stones. And what's kind of funny is the variety of sizes in which this, and it, it relates to a personal heartbreak, you know. And um, this is a, a collection that I was so happy to find. This is the other side of the tooth fairy. I don't have a better picture of this, but this is an image, uh, a collection brought to me by two parents who collected the, the teeth that their children had placed underneath the pillows. You know, the, the American story is that you put the pillow, you put a, your, the, lost to, or the loose tooth under the pillow in the morning, there's a dollar or a quarter or something, but the, the parents had actually managed to save the teeth and they had them labeled, you know, so they're, we, I mean, all the information is down here, but that was, you know, so sweet. And again, it's like a kind of, it's like a, I think of it as a, these things are passing through the lives of people all the time, but to sort of, the collector manages to stop the flow somehow like a photograph, like time is stopped, or the object is actually literally like taken out of the usual trajectory to the garbage bin. And as a result of that, a certain other thing happens. It's not so hard to keep your children's teeth, you know, but to keep them labeled and to then... And what was great about this show was that it created an opportunity to some extent for these little things to, to join other things that were like that and, and achieve a kind of gravity that or a pub, a find a public that they might nor, ordinarily never have. That was the sort of thing that made the show so much fun. Because it's one thing that, I mean, if you were visiting some aunt, I'm not sure you'd want to see your cousin's teeth, but in a public place where anonymity was sort of guaranteed, it was something else. Um, and the context, but it's right, it's the beauty in the everyday life. That's what, yeah. that's why it probably is more inspirational than a douche. It was exactly, and also the universality of these things. I mean, it's a sort of, you know, in a way, these rituals are are mythic, but they don't. They very rarely have this sort of. Um, they're not illustrated often by material samples, and so it's almost like making the myth, um, giving it a kind of visibility that it ordinarily is totally literary or just cerebral. It's sort of. You know, actually, it would be like what it would be like to actually see the Holy Grail. I, I mean, I'm kidding, but you know what I mean. To sort of have a, a, a thing to offer 
it in connection with the, the other side of the tooth fairy. I imagine, like, because, anyway, it, it gets into weird stuff too when you start to think about all that stuff that happened in Nazi Germany, you know, and the, the gold that was removed from, anyway, we don't want to go there, but that's, but it's still, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah.